and welcome to another concept video. Arr. This video is called The Anchor. It's all about taking a note and anchoring it to your fretboard and choosing cards around that note. We love winning anchor, don't we? Oh, yes, we do win our anchors. Hi, hi, hi. Enjoy another video. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pirate, for that lovely introduction. Um, as he said there, we're looking at today this concept of using a note as an anchor. Um, so essentially what we're going to do, we're going to take um, one note and we're going to work out a load of chords that, that include that note within the chord. Um, and then this gives us a creative way of trying new chords together that we wouldn't normally think maybe fit. Um, but then it also gives us an idea of kind of highlighting that note within the chords to give us a kind of pedal point idea, a note to keep coming back to. Um, so again, that could be that, you know using it for composition, so it could be more of a compositional thing, or it could be actually making some interesting accompaniments to a chord sequence, anything you want really. Um, remember, this is all about trying new ideas, so you know being creative, experimenting, trying to break you know the habits we normally do when we pick up a guitar and start jamming the same old stuff, trying to break through that really. Um, so if you're stuck for compositional ideas, this may be something that helps, or possibly not. It could just be something to have a bit of fun with. Okay, so in essence, we just take one note as our anchor. <gasps> anchor! Anchor! Ah! Uh, thanks. And then we work out the chords that contain that note um, and put them together into an interesting sequence. And we can play them in any way we want to do. So for example, we're going to take the note D, okay, which I'm going to play here on the B string third fret. Okay, nice easy D note, okay. Um, we're going to look at a little bit about the, the chords that contain that note D. Okay, we're going to play around with making a sequence using those chords and then maybe play them in a way that really highlights that D. Okay, so from now on, in all the diagrams you kind of see flashing around the place, um, that D is going to be green. Green D. Okay, so first thing we look at is um, what chords contain the note D. So first, probably the most obvious one is um, chords that use D as the root. Okay, so D is the kind of root note. So two chords there, we've got a D minor and a D major. So you can see there's two chords, the notes they contain, yeah? Okay, with D as the root. So um, we're gonna choose D minor for, the, for, the, for this example, okay? So you can see bog standard D minor chord. Okay, within that D minor chord, there's that note D within the chord. Fantastic, okay? Um, next, we're going to look at <coughs> D as the perfect fifth of a chord. So if we have D as the fifth of a chord, the perfect fifth of a chord, we've got either a G major, okay, bog standard, open G major, or G minor. Whichever one we're going to choose, okay? Um, again, we're going to choose a nice G major. Notice how within the chord shape, we're actually going to have that finger on the D. Sometimes that's left open, but for this, we want that D note on this octave, okay? So, so far we've got a D minor with our D there, G major with our D there. Fantastic. Okay, so what about um, D as a third? Yeah, so if D is our major third, okay, we get a lovely B flat major chord. If D is a minor third, we get a lovely B minor chord. Okay, so again, we're going to choose B flat major for this. There we go. Fantastic. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so so far now we've got three different chords. We've got a D minor with that lovely open, with that lovely D on the third fret. We've got a G major with that D. We got a B minor, B flat minor, B flat major, sorry. Perfect. Okay, so those together. Do whatever you want with them, can't we? Yeah, but that D note is always in them. Highlight that D whoever we want, we can make that D a real big part of it if we finger pick. So 
where you could do like a little pedal thing that keeps coming back to the D. Wherever you want, or you could just drum. Because that D is still going to be in there, yeah? Fantastic. Okay, great. So, our next thing then, let's look a bit more, more different at this now then. So we've got our D as the root, we've got our D as the fifth, we've got our D as the third. What about D as a seventh? Okay, so if we have D as a, a minor seventh, um, one chord we could have is, is E7, E dominant seven. Nice E7 shape here, as you can see it, with that D, exactly the same place on there, okay. Now this is where it starts a bit more interesting. So we have our D minor with a D, G, with a D, B flat with a D, E7. Oh yes, like instant Radiohead. It's great, isn't it? Getting that D every time. Yeah, love it. Okay, great. So we can stop there or we can carry on, do whatever we want. So let's think about that D as the major seventh. Okay, so now if we have an E flat major seven, that becomes a major seven. And normally you might play that up here with your D being there, okay, on the seventh fret. But we're gonna play this nice little kind of open shape here, which really highlights that D. It's E flat major seven. So now again, Whatever order you want to do with him, etc., etc., you can do whatever you like. Okay, so what about if the D becomes something a bit more interesting? What if we keep playing around with this and we try different chords together? Um, lots of possibilities we can do. So, what about something like if the D becomes the add nine of a chord? Okay, so if we were to take this lovely C add nine chord, okay, you've got the D as the add nine. Nice, isn't it? Now that's always a good alternative chord to use instead of a regular C. <gasps> C? Did you say C? Oh, we love the C. Oh, oh. Thank you. Okay, no more. I promise. Okay, it's a lovely C9. Okay, again, works well with the B flat. Highlight the D. D. Oh, nice. Straight away, you could write a song with that, whatever you want. Fantastic. And what about more kind of jazzy intervals then? What about if the D is the flat nine of a chord? So if we take this lovely C sharp seven flat nine. Oh, lovely, yeah, yeah. So you've got that D there again, D note. It's a C sharp seven flat nine. Oh yeah, fantastic. Okay, still using that D as the anchor. Okay, or, um, or what about something like an, an F sharp seven sharp five? The D becomes a sharp five. Oh yes, lovely, that's gorgeous, isn't it? I love that. Okay, strictly speaking, that D in this in this instance is a is a C double sharp. <gasps> double sharp. Oh, I can't do this. Double sharp. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, so there you go. Try different variations of it pick different notes all over the fretboard anywhere you want but just this idea of taking a note as an anchor using that as your guide to get a load of chords play around with them play with what you want to do strum it pick it keep coming back to that note use that as your anchor but it's a really really good way of getting into getting into a new way of composing um, and hopefully as these videos are supposed to do just give you this little concept to play around with so thank you ever so much um, like and subscribe and um, I'll see you next time cheers